Hi, Martin here. Today I'm going to do a transmission filter and flush. Uh, doing the filter first, the four quarts approximately that we're going to drain out of the pan, put it all back together, and then we're going to do an entire transmission flush. And uh, I'll show you how we do that. All right, let's get started. All right, my transmission has a drain plug. So, we'll start there. If yours does not, what you uh, will need to do is loosen the bolts. And what I like to do is loosen them and just let it come down, have the drain pan ready. And you'll probably remove the ones on one side by leaving the other ones in there but loose. And as the pan comes down, have your drain pan ready to catch everything. It is definitely a little bit messier that way. And that's one thing nice about having a drain plug. And not too many automatic transmissions actually have one. You get approximately four to five quarts out of here. Now while your fluid's draining, you can go ahead and uh, pull all the bolts out. This particular application, the 10 millimeter bolts, is a uh, Japanese transmission in this Cherokee. And I did this approximately 50,000 miles ago, and I feel it's time to do it again. Okay, there's three bolts back here in the back of this pan that you can't even see. Now, you probably don't have that problem if you're not running like an aftermarket uh, cross member. This is one from uh, Rough Country. So these three are really hard to get to. You got to kind of pretty much do it by feel. And I just uh, use a 10 millimeter deep socket, get on there and this will be the, uh, the pain in the butt part of the of it um, and it won't be so much taking them out it's getting them back in okay we got all the bolts out the pan is just sitting here now the only thing holding it in you have a dipstick tube on this one and it goes right up to there and if we just uh, hopefully Putting up a fight. I sure hope that comes out of there. Okay, got the pan pulled down. The dipstick is loose here now. Now, if I can get it wiggled out of here with the exhaust and everything, that'd be great. There we go. Just like that. And that's what it looks like when the pan's removed. This is your filter. Got one, two, three, four. Looks like four bolts. Now, I've got to say, that is incredibly clean. Usually you pull these and you'll get like a black film on the bottom of the pan. And uh, that tells me I could have just done a flush and not even bothered with a, a new screen. So, I mean, that, is, that looks great. Okay, and then there's a couple magnets in here, too. These, uh, Barely got anything on them whatsoever. The transmission's doing a good job. Nothing unusual in here. I'm gonna get some brake parts cleaner and we'll clean this up.
All right, and that's what you want your pan to look like. That's awesome. All right, we're ready to put the gasket on. Here is the uh, part number I used. It's a Wix 58936. Comes with the new screen. And a new gasket. They make the gasket just a little bit small on the holes, which is nice because that way it hangs onto the bolts. So I just get them barely started, just kind of push the gasket in there just a little bit. Especially for these back ones. pan is ready to reinstall. All right, now remove the four bolts that are holding the screen in. And you will usually get a bunch more fluid to come out like that. filter as a gasket right here that seals on and there's also one around this one bolt right there all right now simply get your new filter line up the bolts Now the filter has a gasket that's already uh, installed and it's glued to the gasket itself. There's no need for sealant. Reinstall the four bolts and torque. And this is, it's a very light torque. I mean, you're talking a few foot pounds is more than enough. Because these are only like a quarter inch diameter bolts. All right, I'm going to reinstall the pan. Got to kind of wiggle this thing into place. There we go. There we go. All right. Get the dipstick tube lined up. And then. it ready. Get a couple of them started. And right now I'm not drawing any of them up. I just want to get them all started. All right now with the transmission pan bolted back in place and torqued properly, ready to put the transmission fluid back in. And since we're doing a flush, um, I'm just going to dump four quarts in it and then I'll show you how I disconnect the transmission line and we do a flush on it. Um, if I was just to do a filter like I just done, I'd probably put, let's say, uh, I mean, it's probably safe to put four quarts in this, but let's say you put three in, you fire it up and then you check it. You're low, you add, because you do not want to overfill your transmission. Um, I'm using a, a Lucas semi-synthetic automatic transmission fluid. This is a, uh, a Dextron 3 type fluid and for Mercon, not Mercon 5 or anything like that. But um, I've used this one before. Seems to work awesome. This, um, this is a Japanese transmission in the Cherokee. 
this particular transmission takes Dextron 3. It does not take ATF 4, like uh, you might put in a Chrysler transmission. All right. Hopefully I can get a decent picture of this. Um, what we got to do here, I got, well, I've got a milk jug. This is my favorite thing to use because it's one gallon. Um, I've disconnected the line returning to the transmission after you go through your coolers and this line will be going back to the transmission. So dumping back into the pan, basically. We're disconnecting that one into a gallon jug. We're going to fire the engine up. This is going to start filling up. And when it gets real close to the top, we kill the motor. And then we add four more quarts of fluid. Dump this and do it again. All right, I'm going to fire it up and we'll see what happens. If I got this wrong, we're going to have a mess. stopped I think it started sputtering so I may not have enough that four quarts I put in there just wasn't enough we'll dump another four in there and do this again filled up. I've got it up to 194 degrees. That'd be a good normal operating temperature. Let's go check the fluid. That all went real well. Um, got the transmission fluid right up to the max mark, uh, which is kind of a good idea if you're out the uh, rock crawling type and you get in those situations where you're uh, going up some really steep hills. I've heard of where transmissions will disengage because the fluid is pulling away from the pickup because there's not quite enough fluid in there. Um, so I like bringing it up to the very top course at normal operating temperature um, and to do that by the way do it just driving around town where you're not getting it into overdrive because once you get it into overdrive your transmission will actually start to cool back down because your torque converter is locked and there's no slip because um, I can get my transmission like you saw there I had it up to 194 and that was just driving up and down the surface streets never got got it into overdrive as soon as you get in overdrive, you can actually watch the temperature go down. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful for you. Please subscribe. We'll see you next time.